When a month like this comes around, what's your first reaction? Alhamdulillah. What a Lord who doesn't have to forgive us, who doesn't have to show us mercy, but he still sends us seasons of forgiveness and mercy to inspire the best version of us. What a Lord who sends upon us a month that even if we just did the deeds that we typically do of obligatory deeds, they are multiplied in their reward. What a Lord who controls the gates of the heavens and the earth and who by His will, by His power, by His might, by His mercy, the gates of paradise are flung open, the gates of hellfire are shut and the devils are put into chain. Alhamdulillah. We have a merciful Lord, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Allah wants you to know Him as a compassionate and as a merciful Lord who sends you these moments of forgiveness. And so the first thing about Ramadan is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to live to see that moment, the first thing is, Alhamdulillah, you allowed me to see that moment because you have to be happy because you're here for the season in the first place. Alhamdulillah. So what is it like to wake up on the first day of Ramadan? What is it like to wake up on the 20th day of Ramadan and to have that opportunity? Alhamdulillah. The second thing is, notice does not have any secrets. It doesn't have any specific acts of worship. How many times is Ramadan mentioned in the Quran, by the way? One time. It's only mentioned once. This month, which becomes the centerpiece of our lives of the year, that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah described as Yusuf alayhi salam to the rest of his brothers. By one, the rest of the 11 are forgiven. By one. The one month out of the 12. This one month that becomes our heart and soul and chance to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned only once in the Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. That's it. The month of Ramadan where the Quran was revealed. Why is that so profound? Because all you're doing in Ramadan are the things that you're supposed to already be doing better. The companions prayed Qiyam throughout the year, but in Ramadan, they pushed themselves more. You don't pick up a special book. You're going to the Quran, but you're reading it with more devotion and more recitation. You're attaching yourself to it more. You know how to pray. You know how to read. You know how to exert yourself. You know how to make dua, but you make more of it and you make better dua and you connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a greater sense of devotion. There are no secrets here as to what you need to be doing to get close to Allah. There are no unfamiliar acts of worship. And many times we start to think about these extraordinary things because religiosity is so up and down for a moment. We start to think about all these extra things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He has sent you to this world to test you, to see who will be the best with their deeds. Not akhtharu amala, not more deeds, better deeds. It wasn't this crazy equation that the Prophet ﷺ had. Because Allah doesn't need your poetry. Allah needs your piety. Allah doesn't need you to rhyme. Allah wants you to be sincere. It's comprehensiveness. Allah knows when you say, Atina fid dunya hasana, what you mean and what you want from Him. It's got to be something here. So when you start to try to quantify, you might get lost in the, in the math. You might get lost in the numbers game you might get lost in your to-do list. I keep talking about your to-do list. I promise you I'm coming to it. If I told you, pray the last 10 nights, three hours of the last 10 nights, for some of us, that's easier than taking 10 minutes to pick up the phone and call somebody that your ego has kept you away from reconciling with. Let's be real. It's not always about what we want, it's what Allah demands from us. And sometimes stepping on that ego is a lot harder than exerting the body and extra ibadah. Exerting the body and even the soul, yes, and the heart, and extra worship. But Allah says, leave these two until they fix what's between themselves. The gates of the heavens are shut for them. I'm not talking about the one who's mazloom, by the way, who's wronged and who would expose themselves to harm. I'm talking about the natural types of grudges, the things that develop between us and others. And all of us, if we're introspective enough, we'll see that even if we're a little less guilty, we're probably guilty as well and contributing to that hatred and to that standoff. And you be the one because you want Allah to forgive you. Oh Allah, you are the forgiving one. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Put your money where your mouth is. Forgive, pardon people. Don't you want Allah to forgive you and pardon you? Pick up that phone, call that person, 
go visit that person, break that standoff. The Sahaba would not have the audacity, the jur'ah, he's literally calling audacity, to let a grudge carry on to Ramadan. I'm crushing it, I'm squashing it, because I want Allah to forgive me. I want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That wasn't the Ramadan hack you were expecting, was it? But that's your hack. That's how we would meet Ramadan. That's how we wanted it. And Allah knows how hard it is from you. So I'm gonna get to, inshallah ta'ala, your to-do list. But before your to-do list, Ramadan is not your set of deeds that you're gonna suddenly tally up and a lot of people wanna make their goals, set their goals for Ramadan and they should. More than anything else, Allah wrote fasting upon you as He wrote it upon those that came before you so that you could become God conscious people. Leave off the sins, you will be the closest of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever does not give up these sinful things of the tongue and these arguments and this hatred and acting upon them, the deeds that follow. Because if you have a nasty tongue, you probably have a nasty slate of deeds as well. And the tongue itself is a place of deeds and actions. Allah has no need for you to give up your food and your drink. A lot of us approach Ramadan with this to-do list of so many good deeds. But the sin that you're insisting upon or a sinful lifestyle, and the worst sins are the ones that are lifestyle sins. You know, there are sins that you fall into every once in a while. There are sins, you know, subhanAllah, you were in a conversation, someone's name came up, that ghiba was too sweet. It was sweeter than a piece of cake in front of you and you just went right into it. You felt regret afterwards, astaghfirullah, you moved away from it. There are lifestyle sins. There are the sins that you consciously do every single day of your life and you've just accepted them as part of your life. You have literally adopted them as lifestyle sins. They're part of who you are now. Those sins are like holes in the bucket. So if you pour 20 gallons of Qur'an or 30 gallons of Qur'an into that vessel, you've still got those holes in the bottom of the bucket. Taqwa is plugging the holes. Taqwa is tarkul ma'asi. It's leaving off what is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If when you're making your list, if you say, after Ramadan, I will never commit this sin again, knowingly, inshallah, I'm going to do everything I can to root this sin out of my life. I'm gonna change this about myself. I'm gonna take this next step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is far more precious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the math, the numbers you're going to check off. And so what I'm saying to you is, before your Ramadan to-do list, what's your to-not-do list? Your to-not-do list is more important than your to-do list in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're to leave off what you're going to stop is more important than what you're going to start because you were meant to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your fitrah, your natural inclination is to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah is your destination on the GPS so long as you don't take a wrong turn. So your to not do list is more important than your to do list. So I'm challenging each of you to first and foremost have a to, to not do list for Ramadan and then make your to do list. Then after your to-do list, make your to-fix list. And those are the relationships, those are strained relationships that you need to fix. So you have your to-not-do list, you have your to-do list, you have your to-fix list, and then I'm going to give you two more lists. There is room for quantifiable deeds in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have to be consistent. So ahabu al-a'mal ilallah, the most beloved of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, adwamu are the ones that are consistent even if they're small. So there is something to say about quantity, about numbers. That's why you pray five times a day. That's why zakat is 2.5% on your retained earnings. So make your list from now. What are the quantifiable consistent deeds that I will do after Ramadan? Make your after Ramadan quantity list now. Don't wait till, don't wait till Ramadan finishes to try to pick up the scraps. Say in Ramadan, I'm gonna read this much Quran. After Ramadan, I think I can reasonably do this much every single day. In Ramadan, I'm gonna, after Ramadan, I'm gonna try to pick up my Qiyamul Layl. I think I can pray witr every night, inshallah ta'ala. I think, knowing myself, I can do witr every night. I think I can add two rak'ahs every night. Put your quantity list together from now, inshallah ta'ala, and then your fifth one. And this is the thing I'll end with, inshallah ta'ala. Your qualities list. So you have your to not do list, you have your to-do list, you have your to-fix list, you have your quantity list, you have your qualities list. What are the qualities? I want you to open the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun and the end of Al-Furqan. 
the qualities of al mu'minun the qualities of the believers the end of those two lists the end of those two lists by the way one of them is they are the people that have these high places in paradise by their patience but the highest rooms in paradise belong to those that have the highest traits, the servants of the Most Merciful, Ibadul Rahman. Allah says about, they are the ones who inherit al firdaus They're the ones who inherit the highest level of paradise. So what's your qualities list? Your qualities list, I want you to journal, and I want you to look through those traits and match yourself up. Do some introspection and say, where do I match up to each of these qualities? And what is my commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in trying to get better? What are the things that are stopping me from having these qualities? What are the environments I need to change? What are some of the things I need to be more aware of? Who do I need to put around me? And what do I need to do to start to have these qualities? All right? That's your quality. So it's more of a journal thing. What's your first list? To not do list. Your to not do list is your most important list in Ramadan. What's your next list? To do list. What's your third list? To fix list. What's your fourth list? Your quantifiable deeds list. What's your fifth list? Your qualities list. The beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, the end of Surah Al-Furqan, those traits. Your to not do list, your five lists, your to not do lists are the things you're going to quit inshallah ta'ala once and for all from now, from Ramadan onwards. You're going to commit to Allah that you're not going to return to these sins. Your to do list for Ramadan are the quantifiable goals you're setting for yourself in Ramadan. Your to fix list are the relationships because you don't want your grudges to get in the way of the acceptance of your deeds. The relationships you're going to fix and the reconciliation. Your fourth list, your quantity list, are the quantifiable deeds you plan to continue after Ramadan. Your fifth list are your qualities, the qualities that you hope to try to have inshallah ta'ala after Ramadan and your journaling as you're trying to think about how you can embody what Allah mentions in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun and Ibadul Rahman, the servants of the most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to achieve these goals and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to achieve the ultimate goal of Jannatul Firdaus, of the highest level of paradise, where we are neighbors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in those high suspended abodes that are like chalets in the skies of the heavens in paradise under the throne of the most merciful, gazing at him day and night, completely forgiven for our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this Ramadan from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds inside and outside of Ramadan. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings inside and out of Ramadan. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.